Okay, so Junior Roberts here, coming to you with real juniorroberts.com. And in this video, we're going to be looking at vector addition and we're going to be focusing on how we go about adding parallel vectors and anti parallel vectors. So let's go right into it. So let us say we have a situation in which we have a vector, for example, a vector like this, right? And let us say this is a, a force vector, right? Of say 20 newtons, right? And it's acting in this direction, right? And then similarly, we have another vector, right? Let us say another force vector, right? And this one is 30 newtons, right? And from, we can recall, and as we can recall about vector quantities, they have both a magnitude and a direction. And here we're given the magnitude of these two vectors. So we can consider, let us say, our cardinal points, or our compass points, right? And we can consider this as north, south, here would be east, and here would be west, right? So, therefore, based on our compass points right here, we can say that these two vectors are going east, right? And they're, So, therefore, they are going in the same direction because they are going east. So, we can say that this vector is east, right? And this vector is going towards the east. So, both vectors are going in the same direction. So, therefore, we can say that these two vectors are parallel, right? because they are going in the same direction, so we have two parallel vectors. So the question now is, how do we go about adding these two vectors, right? So, again, we know that the vectors, they have a magnitude given by these values here, and they have a direction, right, which is indicated by the direction of the arrowhead, and we listed it, we listed it here as to the east. So if we want to actually add these two vectors, right, we can actually consider uh, the sum of these two vectors, right? So what we'll say is that our resultant, we're going to call our resultant R, would be equal to the sum. Let us call, let us give these vectors some names. So let us say this is uh, F1, right? And this is F2, right? Because we have two force vectors. So what we're saying is that our resultant would be equal to F1 plus F2, Right? So our resultant will be equal to F1 plus F2. Now, in order for us to actually add these two vectors, we have to consider both their magnitude and their direction. Right? So for whenever we're adding vectors, we have to consider the magnitude and the direction. So since we have these two vectors going to the east, we can actually make a statement in which we say that east is our positive direction. Right? That's, this is just our convention. So east, any vector going east is going in the positive direction. And we can say that any vector going to the west would be the negative direction. Right? Direction. So therefore, we can now go ahead and actually add these two vectors. So to do that, we will just simplify that our resultant R will be equal to the sum of F1 vector plus F2 vector. So F1 vector is 20 newtons, so we can write 20 newtons, and it is going to the east, and we say that east is our positive direction. So we can say that this is positive 20 newtons, right? Because in this case, this positive sign right here indicates the direction, right? And we're going to say, you now we're going to add that. Let me use a different color. We're going to add that, right, to our F2 vector, which is 30 newtons. That's the magnitude, so we have 30 newtons. And again, this vector is going to the east, and east is our positive direction, so we can put on a positive sign right here. Now, for simplicity, right, we know that this is a positive vector, right, so we can actually choose to drop this positive sign. So we can write 20 newton, and we know that without the, without the sign right here, we know that this is a positive vector. Right? So we have 20 newtons, 
plus and we're going to do the same thing right here so we're going to drop our plus sign and we're going to just leave it 30 newtons so now what we can simply do now is to just take the sum of these so we have 20 newtons plus 30 newtons and that will give us an answer of 50 newtons so what we see then is that when we add these two vectors because they're going in the sum when we add these two vectors because they're going in the same direction right what we end up with is a larger vector going in the same direction as these two vectors so therefore what we're saying is that whenever when we add parallel vectors so when we add parallel vectors parallel vectors right in other words vectors in the same direction same direction so vectors going in the same direction right we can can take the sum of the two the two vectors right and we can actually write an expression right in which we say that our resultant r for parallel vectors is equal to the sum of vector a so let's say vector a plus the sum of vector b right so whenever we have parallel vectors we can just simply apply this uh, expression here right let me just put on an r because the resultant is also a vector right so we say that our resultant vector is equal to the sum of vector a plus the sum of vector b and we saw it in our example here right by us just simply adding the sum of f1 vector and that of f2 vector and we get a vector that is larger right and is going in the same direction as the two vectors because again even though we don't have the plus sign right here this is a positive vector so therefore it is actually going to the east because east is our positive direction so now let's now look at how we go about adding anti-parallel vectors so let us say we have a vector right for example we have a vector like this right and in this case let me also use a force vector so a vector like that and let us say this is our force vector we're going to call this f1 and f1 is equal to let me say um 30 newtons right and then i also have another vector like this right and this is my f2 vector right and this has a magnitude of let us say 20 newtons Right. So, again, if we consider our compass points, let me just put it right here. So, we have north, south, east, and west. So, if we look at these two vectors, we will see that F1 is actually going to the east. Right. And F2 is going to the west. So now, we can now make a statement that uh, east, any vector going to the east, is our uh, positive direction. Right, just like before, when we make our convention that our vectors that go into the east are considered going in the positive direction, and then any vector going to the west, right, we can say that it's going in the negative, negative direction. So now, in order for us to actually take the sum of these two vectors, right, we have to say now that the resultant r, right, is equal to, so our vector, resultant r is equal to the sum of f1 vector plus f2 vector, right? But then again, just as before, whenever we're considering vectors, we have to consider their magnitude, right, and also their direction, right? So we have to consider the magnitude and the direction. So we can now write that. Or resultant r right will be equal to f1 right which is our 30 newton vector and that's going to the east and east is our positive direction so we're going to write this as before positive uh, 30 newtons right and we're adding that right to our f2 vector which is 20 newton that's its magnitude and it's going to the west and we say that any vector going to the west is going in the negative direction. So we can write 
negative 20 newtons right so now what we can do now from here is thus simply write that our resultant r right which is a vector is equal to 30 newtons right in this case we have a positive sign and a negative sign and whenever we multiply a positive and a negative sign we end up getting a negative sign so negative sorry so positive times negative gives you negative so we have our resultant is equal to 30 newtons minus because of these two signs right here so the positive and the negative sign when we multiply them we get a negative sign so what we end up with now is 30 newtons minus 20 newtons right so what we end up with now is that 30 minus 20 is 10 newtons so our resultant in this case would be 10 newtons and this is positive 10 so we know that this is actually 10 newtons to the east right so what we realize in this case is that whenever we add anti-parallel vectors right i should have actually mentioned that this, these are anti-parallel anti-parallel parallel vectors right when we go about adding anti-parallel vectors what we get is that we get the difference of the two vectors right and the vectors so what we get is the difference of the two vectors right and the resultant vectors acts in the direction of the larger vector because we realize that the direction of our larger vector in this case which is our 30 newton vector which was f1 was going to the east right it was going to the east so therefore our resultant will also act in that similar direction so we can actually write a statement so we're going to say now when adding anti-parallel vectors right which as we said before are vectors going in the opposite direction opposite direction right we take we take the difference of the two vectors right and the direction of the resultant resultant is in the direction of the larger vector all right so again whenever we're adding anti-parallel vectors which are vectors going in opposite direction we simply take the difference of the two vectors and the direction of the resultant is in the same direction of the larger vector so we can actually write a, a mathematical statement for this so we can write that our resultant r for anti-parallel vectors is equal to vector a minus vector b right so our resultant is equal to vector a minus vector b and again whenever we want to determine the direction the direction will be in that of our larger vector so this was junior roberts with real juniorroberts.com if there was anything in this video that you wish to get further clarification on please post them below in comments and i'll do my best to clear up any misconceptions for you if you're studying physics and you find that you're struggling to understand certain topics, then sign up for my live interactive CSEC physics classes. Full details will be posted below in the description. Like this video if it was helpful and thank you for watching.